There's been some talk about the 7800X3D blowing up and Gamers Nexus also made a great video on their research around this problem. I wanted to explain in this video a little bit about what is actually happening and a, bit, a little bit of the background so you understand it a little bit better. So to start off with, there are multiple voltage wheels coming into the CPU. The V-Core one is of course the most important. It delivers most of the power to the CPU cores. But one of the other important ones is the v, uh, the v SOC or the voltage going to the SOC. The SOC is the main chip that does a lot of the communication to the memory, to the PCIe Express and between CCDs for cores. And it also has the internal uh, GPU inside of it. The idea of the SOC is that it's a different chip that doesn't have to be high spec as, as, as the CCD, which also means they can make it at a smaller node and it's a bit less expensive. So what's happening is that the V-Core comes from the VRM and the SOC has a separate VRM and the voltage can be set by either separately. And it seems what's happening is that the SOC voltage is actually really high um, from the BIOS. So normally it would be around one volt, and it is in this case, but when applying Expo, which is kind of the XMP that's been designed by AMD, which is, it, it's not really overclocking, it's for the memory. Uh, apparently when turning on Expo on some ASUS motherboards, uh, like the one that Gamers Nexus tests it, it will deliver a much higher voltage to the SOC rail. Normally, a high voltage to the SOC rail is not really a, a huge problem because the SOC is a lot more robust than the actual CCD, especially like the one with the 3D V-Cards. Uh, but this voltage is really high. It's 40% higher than the normal voltage. And I think that's kind of where the problem really lies because the really high voltage can cause other issues. Uh, what's happening is that the CCDs are breaking and the SOD, uh, the SOC is also burning up. If you look at how the voltage goes in, then the V-Core is still going to, going to the CCD. So normally I wouldn't really understand why the SOC would break the CCD. But before the V-Core goes to the actual course itself, there's a layer in between. And the layer in between has an extra fine voltage control for each CPU separately. And this is called the R RVDD. And this is actually powered by the SOC rail. So the current hypothesis uh, is that the high SOC voltage is actually causing an issue on the CCD through this voltage regulation. I'm not really sure where it's exactly happening. Uh, it might be that it's just a voltage differential that's not really expected. Um, if you have V-Core at one, 1 or 1.1 volts and the SOC is also at 1 or 1.1 volts, then you can expect that there's not really going to be any interaction in between because they have about the same voltage compared to ground. But if one is 1 volt and the other is 1.4 volt, then there can be current flowing between points that's not really expected. And if that happens in something, especially like transistors or where things are uh, separated because there's no voltage difference, but once you have a large enough voltage difference for current to flow, then some things might be breaking. And those things can also be things that normally don't even have one volt. They might, might even have a lower voltage because that's kind of how it's designed. So that is the current hypothesis right now. That's also what Gamers Nexus showed. And it seems plausible because if you look at the CPUs and where they're breaking, then it seems to be around the CCD where they're breaking and also a burn mark right at the iGPU. And the CCD and the iGPU are both powered with this extra voltage regulation and they're not powered with the SOC. So I think that's the first problem, that that's the root cause of the CPUs breaking. Uh, 
The second issue is, of course, that some of the motherboards are also breaking. And this is more in the lines of, well, the safety protections are just not good enough. So the CCDs and the iGPU, I guess, or parts of the CPU, when they break, they will short out. They will have a very low resistance, which means that if you put a voltage on it, a lot of current will flow and it will push in a lot of power. So what's happening in the iGPU or in the CCD is that when the computer is starting up and it might not really boot because the CPU is not really there, its CPU is broken, but the SOC is still giving voltage and this is going to um, this is going to a short and it's going to deliver hundreds of watts, 400 watts through the CPU and this breaks. Well, the CPU gets broken even more through thermal expansion and the silicon literally breaking, but it seems that the motherboard will also break from giving this power, the socket breaks or other things that can happen. Um, I'm not really sure if this really high power is coming through the V-Core or to the SOC, because in the video of Gamers Nexus, there is, um, in the video of the Gamers Nexus, they are only looking at the 12 volt 8 pin on the motherboard. But normally the VRM for the SOC is a lot smaller than the VRM for the V-Core. So I'm not really sure. I think if, if you push 400 volts, uh, 400 watts through the SOC, then that would probably have an overcurrent limitation. Whereas the VRM for the V-Core is very robust. It has a lot of phases and it's probably be able to deliver the 400 volts without a problem. Generally, the VRMs on motherboards nowadays are very high spec. They can deliver a lot of power just to be able to deliver very clean power, even if it's lower. But we know from this generation that the 7950 can push uh, to about 200 or 250 watts. So 400 watts is not really out of the realm of possibility, but in this case, when you're running stock, especially the 7800X3D, it's not a, it shouldn't be expected. So the motherboard should definitely have safety protections. And I think that's where the issue lies for the motherboard breaking. Safety protections aren't there. Overcurrent protection for when, for example, you have a short on the CPU is not there. Normally when the CPU breaks, the motherboard will see an overcurrent and they'll just shut everything down which means that you only have one part that breaks instead of having multiple parts that break. So I guess this is how far we are with current information. Uh, I'm still very curious about where the breaking is actually happening, why the, and also why the high SOC voltage is breaking the CPU. I think a lot of investigations are already gone into the safety protections that's not really there and the motherboards and why the cracking happens, but I'm still, I'm still not hundred percent on why the CPU is actually breaking from the high SOC, and I think that's also why it's, that's also why it's happening because AMD doesn't really expect to have such a high SOC, so they probably didn't test around it, whereas motherboard manufacturers might have uh, just set like a voltage and they saw that it worked, and they might have been testing with a different CPU because when they made the motherboard, they probably didn't have the 7800X3D and they did have other CPUs. And it seems that the 7800X3D is more susceptible to this. I'm not really sure why it's more susceptible because this is mostly a V-core voltage thing. I think the V-cache is getting power in a slightly different way, but it might be that the V-cache has an effect on internal resistances or the V-cache still gets uh, still has like a regulation that's also built off the SOC where you have current leaking through and then uh, yeah you can have current leaking through or there can be like a difference in internal resistances that causes them um, uh, yeah that causes the CCD to break or something unexpected to happen so um, yeah we'll be continued uh, I'm curious about any further investigation I think the limitation on the vCore is going to help a lot with breaking CPUs. There's definitely gonna be more safety features added to motherboards from now on. And 
I'm very curious about um, what's going to happen with Expo because the the main root of this is that you have like um, memory configuration. They've added voltage on the SoC to get more stable memory. DDR5 is still, of course, a bit newer than this, and it needs. Um, but I guess DDR5 is uh, harder to get stable. And together with the motherboard design being a lot harder, um, getting it stable was probably also the issue. And I think that's why they put the SOC high, SOC voltage high. Uh, I hope that the motherboard design is still sufficient so that the SOC voltage didn't really need to be there. But I guess we'll see. Um, my recommendation for everyone that has one of these CPUs and motherboards is we just don't use the Expo. Don't overclock, keep it at SOC, check if your SOC voltage is at one volt and make sure that you run the BIOS update uh, when it comes out. Um, the normal recommendation would be to update your BIOS right when it comes out. I'm thinking that the BIOS is probably a little bit rushed and it's probably, especially if your V-core is, uh, your SOC voltage is low, I would just, wait a couple of days to make sure that they didn't they didn't make a different mistake by just trying to get these new BIOSes out as soon as possible. So thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next one.